hello friends welcome and welcome back to my channel my name is Erin and if this is your first time here welcome to booked and busy so what you're about to watch is my attempt at a weekly reading vlog that ends up being a semi-monthly vlog uh and chronicles some of the things and some of the events of the month of may so i mentioned in like a video or two that i've had quite a bit going on in the month of may uh so i talk about that in this vlog um there is some reading i do finish a book i do talk about two other books but this isn't the most reading heavy vlog just to make you aware we do talk about books i haul books all these other things but like actual things that i'm reading it's not as much as i would like um, but as you get if you get to the end you'll see why that is but regardless I do hope that you enjoy the vlog hello friends um, hello friends so today is Wednesday May 15th and it is the eve of Bridgerton season 3 and I have just had Bridgerton brain rot so bad the last couple weeks um i rewatched season one i rewatched season two i've been watching all the press all the interviews all the shorts all the everything to like spark joy because there's like so much going on in my life right now i'm not talking about it in this exact moment but at some point during the vlog i will kind of update you on what's going on but to you know tied myself over until tomorrow i picked up romancing mr bridgerton yesterday when i was at target and i started reading it last night and i am now 175 pages into it so if you have been living under a rock for the last four years bridgerton is this netflix show that is based on this eight book uh, historical romance series by julia quinn that follows the eight bridgerton siblings and this show on Netflix, each season follows a different one of the siblings on their love story. And season three is unique out of the previous seasons, A, because like this is the first season that's coming out where we haven't been in the pandemic. So like the press is really next level. But also this is the first time where we're seeing a couple get together. And it might be the only time, really probably the only time in the series where we're seeing characters that we've been with the entire time so colin is a bridgerton sibling penelope is a is a like El eloise's best friend so we've seen them both since season one so we've seen their friendship and you know their relationship develop over the course of the first two seasons and so now this is like their love story so we're we already know both of these characters we're already invested in them and they've had years and years of friendship and so we're watching that become more and we're also watch gonna watch um penelope's like blooming and coming into her own so i'm really really excited to you know to see that i just you know as a plus size girl it's so exciting to see like nicola coughlin like have this moment and like be this romantic lead in this huge production and get all this press and all this attention and i even know that they're gonna be nude scenes and like just seeing this is, is the representation it just is i can't recall a time where i've seen something of this magnitude before with a you know a love interest that isn't like stick thin so um i'm really excited to see that and you know after rewatching season one and season two i enjoy them even more on rewatch uh and i definitely can see myself rewatching it again in the future but yeah i'm 175 pages into uh romancing mr bridgerton and i am really enjoying it like just even in this book alone we're seeing their friendship develop and we see them get closer and we're also starting to see colin see penelope in a new light because you know from watching the show and from even just you know picking up the first you know, reading the first couple chapters it's penelope has been in love with colin since she was like 16 years old uh and she's got to the point where she's so in love with him that she doesn't even she isn't even in love with him anymore because she's like it's something that's never gonna happen and so i just treasure our friendship 
And so we're finally seeing Colin really open his eyes and see Penelope as more than just his little sister's best friend and, and you know, something like that. And the the exploration of that in the show is a little bit different than what I've seen thus far in the book because in the show they're approaching it as like they had a falling out at the beginning of the end of last season and that is like the first prologue bit of this book. And so now Colin, in an effort to get back into Penelope's good graces, he's going to help her like find a man on the marriage mark or whatever. And that's going to make him jealous. So I don't know if we're going to see anything like that in here, but I am just having such a fun time with it. Um, I'm not sure if the episodes are dropping at midnight, but either way, I'm going to watch all four episodes tomorrow. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to it. So this one is just uh, almost 500 pages, like 460, 70 pages long. So it's a bit of a chunker, but I'm enjoying this also so much more than I enjoyed um, book one and book two. I haven't read Benedict's books and I'll probably read Benedict's book when his season comes out, which should probably be season four. But, um, and I think also it bec is because we already know Colin, we already know Penelope. And so all their interactions aren't just like the tension, the getting to know, we've already done that. They know each other. So we're just seeing them have these warm interactions with one another. They also, because they've been friends for so long, their families are close. And because Penelope is considered a spinster, they also have interactions that we wouldn't see if Penelope was like a debutante because you know, propriety. But. I'm excited. I'm doing sprints on patrons right now. So I'm gonna go and read some more and I'll come back to you probably when I'm like halfway through and give you another update. Hello friends. So I just got back from the grocery store. I started out at like a convenience store but they didn't have what I was looking for. So I just walked to the grocery store. Um, <clears throat> because one of the readathon prompts i think i would have gone over that in the intro is to have a snack or like you know eat some snacks so i got a couple of things so i got two slim gems they were two for three dollars i got two cans of poppy i got the raspberry rose and the strawberry lemon i got the can that i've just been hearing everything so much about and that is the nerds gummy clusters I got like a little charcuterie moment, but like the lazy way. So I got these Cracker Barrel Bites. So this one has uh, Vermont sharp white Gouda and mini pretzels. And this one has Cheddar Jack, Havarti and mini crackers. And then of course I needed some meat. So I got this trio. This is uh, uncured salami, cured, uncured pepper salami, and then herb salami uh, to eat with that. And I have some red wine. And then I also, part snack, part, one of the things is like have a healthy breakfast. So I got this fruit uh, medley. Um, and then I got a thing of strawberries, some bacon and turkey sausage. I got an avocado to have with breakfast. And I got these two Shabani uh, protein greek yogurt smoothies and so this one is coffee and cream and this one is mixed berry vanilla and these are like each 20 grams of protein and i got the pure leaf extra sweet sweet tea so now i have my snacks i'm ready i'm gonna set up for sprints because kickoff sprints start in 15 minutes and i haven't really decided what i'm gonna read so i guess i should go into my office and like pick out a book so we've got, I mean, you can do the bingo board, but you don't have to. But I mean, it's my readathon, so why not? So I remember I put a romanticy and a YA book on there. And I do have a YA fantasy on my TBR, so I may go with that one. Um, but there's also a 2024 release option. So I'm going to look over my uh library holes like the ebooks that i have access to and then i'll come back and tell you what i've decided to read okay so we are in my office and i have chosen a few books so i have one book on my tbr that is both a YA book and a romance to see that i don't have any you know firm plans to read like for a video or anything and that is dragon fruit by Makaya Lucia. Now, the only thing about this is that I don't have the ebook, so I will have to raw dog this one. Um, but the font is pretty big, and I have read two books physically recently, so I'm feeling strong. Uh, so here's an option 
and then i have a couple options for ya book so ya book the one that's on my tbr is song of silver flame like night um this is on my like may tbr and then the one that i put up against the pole against this one is song of the six realms and my ebook loan of this one is expiring so i'm leaning more towards this one than this one and then the last ya is belladonna this is one that i wasn't originally interested in but then i saw becca read it and she really liked it so maybe i'll put a poll up on patreon and let my patrons vote and then for 2024 release i had two other options so one is here we go again by allison cochran this is a uh romance and kiss her once for me was like the last five star romance that i had back in 2022 so here's to hoping this will be a good one and then i also have dragon rider by taran matharu and this one is on my made tbr as well and then for romance to see another one i have is road of the road of bones by demi winters so i think i'm going to let's see this is romance to see this is romance to see 2024 i think i want to do a poll on patreon and let them decide my first read ahead of the sprints and we'll see what happens from there so now i actually am gonna go get set up for reading sprints and i will check in with you guys in a little bit put a finger down if you stayed up until three in the morning to watch bridgerton as soon as it came out and then you proceeded to stay up until six in the morning watching in the entire first half of season one of season three got that out of the way so in the time that i spent from talking to you all to 3 a.m when the episodes dropped i did finish romancing mr bridgerton and honestly i really like this i like this a lot more than i liked the duke and i and the viscount who loved me like this is one of the cases where i feel like they had the best material to work with for the season um i really enjoyed this and honestly which is surprising for me to say I would reread this like this is really enjoyable I really watched I really enjoyed watching Colin and Penelope come together and this reading experience made the watching of the season so much better because there were lines and there were scenes that I felt like were straight out of the book and of course there were lines and scenes from the other books that were but it's almost like like one to one like I feel like Nicola Coughlin and Luke Newton are like the perfect Colin and Penelope um I feel like they're the most accurate representations of them like season one uh I feel like both the actors that played Daphne and Simon they were a lot more put together and a lot suaver than the people in the book like in the show Di Daphne was the diamond of the season her first season but in the book she's like on her second year on the marriage mark and like reggae obviously had much more like swagger and just like appeal than Simon Bassett in the books obviously and then in season two like anthony was kind of always that guy like the viscount really he really is that guy uh but kate in the book she's a bit more miserable i guess is how i would describe it um whether whereas someone ashley's portrayal of um kate is just like a lot more i am doing my duty to my family and like i'm gonna find my happiness elsewhere but i want to get this business handled and honestly oldest siblings unite like I think that that's the, the best pairing but with Colin and Penelope I feel like they are the same they are the same and they just are perfectly cast and I know that Luke Newton originally auditioned for the Duke and like that just that was not the vibe that they, they saw right so I really enjoyed this I had so much fun reading this I my Bridgerton brain rot has been next level like i have actually re-watched the first four episodes again i have spent countless hours on twitter and on instagram like watching edits watching all the interviews on youtube watching the new interviews and i'm just I'm just having such a good time and um bridgerton has really been the thing that has been keeping my mind at ease and like making me happy because may has been such a challenging month for me um 
I kind of mentioned it briefly in my wrap up and I, ha I know I haven't really talked about it much in this vlog yet but on April 30th I quit my teaching job because it, it was just it, it became too much and um going to Mexico and, and having that vacation and then going back to work really was like the, the breaking point for me because in Mexico and during that time I was so relaxed and I was so at ease and then just the transition like I've had breaks before but this is the first break where I went on a vacation rather than just like staying home and doing my usual in a minute and going back to work and like the the, the just drastic contrast from being at peace and sleeping well and being calm and feeling good to being emotionally terrorized and extremely stressed out and worn into the ground and constantly having shifting expectations and just all these things I just was like you know what I can't do it like the my heart was racing at the thought of like going to work and I was just so overwhelmed and I was just like I'm really killing myself for this job and at the end of the day if I die tomorrow like they would just replace me the next day like the life would move on for them but you know I am replaceable in this working environment but I'm not like replaceable in my own life and I live alone I don't have friends in my area I don't have family in my area so it's not like I have this like large community to like see about me and to take care of me like if anything was to happen to me I am completely on my own and as a person with an autoimmune disorder uh, my autoimmune disorder specifically I have arthritis is is exacerbated by stress and so the stress makes me makes me me worse and it makes me be in more pain and then pain also it's stressful so it's just a never-ending situation and even my doctor was like you need to quit this job like you had gotten better but you're getting worse and like stress can cause so many like health concerns I'm just like I, I can't take this anymore I'm like I deserve better treatment than what I'm getting I I feel like the bare minimum like a baseline is like I deserve to be treated with respect I deserve to be called by my name I deserve to not have things thrown at me I deserve to not be assaulted and threatened by students and parents like I deserve to have a manageable workload I like so many other things and like if you are in education or you know any teachers like you may be familiar but I feel like in the media they make it seem like this teacher shortage is just all of a sudden all the teachers disappear but no they're being run out of the classroom like I've been teaching for seven years and teaching now post pandemic is so different than what it was before and it's just too much in addition to that um, my mom has been in the ICU for eight days uh, dealing with kidney failure and so that was really challenging and really stressful to deal with because like I have a very small family this is my mom I don't think I have to explain to you why my mom being in the hospital would be traumatic um and it's been very difficult because like you know I live so far away from home and worrying about things and like do I need to go home and what's gonna happen to my mom is she gonna be okay and like I hadn't heard from her in a few days and I like I don't know what's up and then getting a call and finding out that she had been admitted to the ICU and like all these things going on so dealing with like honestly this like depression that I'm in and like finally coming out of this space where I'm constantly in fight or flight mode I'm, I'm not getting enough sleep I'm stressed I'm in pain and like dealing with like the loss of my career because I know that the things that I have a problem with in teaching are not things that necessarily can be easily changed by just changing schools and I'm like okay this I'm done with this profession like I can't do this anymore I can't live my life waiting for the weekend to come I can't live my life waiting for a break to like put myself back together again um, life is much too short for that and I'm just like there has to be something else out there so in between you know quitting my job and like honestly grieving that and grieving like my my career and grieving my security and like my income and like all these other things and like having to choose instability and insecurity to choose like my life and dealing with you know this like life or death situation with my mom all these things together have just been really difficult and I haven't been doing anything I haven't been leaving the house I haven't been working out I haven't been eating well I haven't been leaving the house as you have seen in May there hasn't really been any content because even on top of that my MacBook broke and I was without it for a week and that was like a $600 repair in my unemployment era so it's been very challenging um it's been very challenging and then also like I wasn't feeling or looking my best 
and I was I just I just was in this like spiral this like rotting spiral like things have been bad for me um but I'm trying to trying to have a better outlook I'm trying to you know improve I'm trying to work on things make myself feel better I went and got my hair done I got my nails done I got my eyelashes done I got my eyebrows done uh in hopes that a that would motivate me to film some as well but also to make me feel better and you know motivate me to to take better care of myself than I have been the last couple weeks so I said all that to say um here are my nails they're very like basic but I wanted something like soft and feminine uh you'll see it probably more tomorrow but like I have like eyelash extensions and I got like my eyebrows tinted again and I have my hair curled but it's just pink curled right now so we've done all that and so hopefully also like YouTube at this point is like my only income so I need to you know make some videos but I did come home to a package one is one thing that I ordered and one is something that I'm assuming one of you sent me so let's see what you sent um but yeah so I am, you know, trying to figure out what my next career is going to be because um, if you don't know this about me, my degree is in political science. I was working and studying to work in politics and then the Trump election happened and I pivoted and I've been working in education for the last seven years, but now I don't want to do that anymore. Um, I want to work in like corporate America, like first my ideal situation right now would be like positioning myself into like an education company uh that makes like curriculum or like an education technology company because i do want to leverage my experience and as a teacher i have so many transferable skills i know that it's just about like marketing that to people and figuring out what my next move is going to be and even if that takes me some time and like i have to move back home or you know whatever it's just a period of transition for me right now so i just ask that you guys bear with me because i really don't know what the future is going to look like This is from Kenya from Lily Reads. I just wanted to send you some love and well wishes. I admire and respect you so much and I love your content. Enjoy your gifts. Oh my God, y'all. It's the Dune book, like the Dune photo book. This is um, Greg Frazier, I think, is the photographer. He was like the director of photography, I want to say, on Dune and Dune Part 2. And Gurney Halleck, which is Josh Brolin. And this is like the visual record. This is so exciting. Thank you so much, Kenya. I, I tried to order this online um, originally when they were doing like the ads, but they were like sold out. And then I saw it on Amazon. I was like, oh so it's available it wasn't just like a limited release i thought okay you know in my unemployment era i'll think about it this is so this is like i need to get a coffee table so they give me a coffee table but look at it that's paul and chani Look at Stilgar. Ah! This is so exciting. Thank you so much. Oh my God. I can't wait to like flip through this. Like my doom brain ride is so real. I want to reread the first book and continue on with the series. Um, but lately, like I've my brain has just been so overwhelmed with everything i've only been reading like fantasy romance because it's easy and like it's fun and like, it kind of pulls you in really quickly and that's what i need right now so next up we have this amazon package that i ordered um i'm I, it's like split into two orders so i'm not sure exactly what's in here Ooh. okay so we've got the naturium Phyto Glow Lip Mask. For the last five years, I've been using the um, 
Okay. Um, for the last five years, I've been using the Laneige uh, lip sleeping mask. When I started using it when I moved to Korea. I absolutely loved it. But I've been really liking Naturium products recently. And this one is like cheaper. So I was like, let me try it out. Um, see what I like, how I like it. And it's like bigger. I feel like there's more product in here. So here it is. I like the packaging. Let's just try it out. Let's try it out. I like how it looks. Mm. It feels nice. We'll see if it's as hydrating as the Laneige one and if I repurchase it. But I do think, honestly, I still will repurchase the Laneige one just because I really love it and I've been using it so long. But I'll never say no to like a lip balm, lip product, anything. Also, speaking of Laneige, I ordered another small pack of the Laneige Creamy Skin. This is the travel size one. The full size one is like $36 and this is $16. But the last one I had, had lasted me like two months and I didn't want to spend $40 on a toner. So I spent $16. But this is the Cream Skin. I really like this. This is comparable to the I'm From Rice Toner. If you have tried that, I really like them both. And then the book that I ordered is Heaven Breaker by Sarah Wolf. This is the latest Red Tower book. Look at those edges. This is a book that I really don't know much about. Honestly, I just liked the design and that's really how Red Tower is getting me. So they got me with Fourth Wing. Um, it says, I cannot stop death, but I can make it think twice. Let's see bravery isn't what you do it's what you endure the duke of the most powerful house no the duke of the powerful house hot claire is the first to die with my dagger in his back he didn't see it coming didn't anticipate the bastard daughter who was supposed to die with her mother on his order he should have left us with the rest of the station starving common rubbish now there's nothing left just icy white rage and a need to make house hot claire pay every damn one of them even if it means riding heaven breaker one of the few enormous machines left over from the war and jousting against the fiercest nobles in the system hmm. each win means another one of my enemies die and here in the cold terror of space it's a cyber the machine and i move as one intent on destroying each adversary even if it's someone i care about even if it's someone i'm falling for only i'm not alone not anymore because there's something in the machine with me something horrifying something more and it won't be stopped oh my god i love it i love it so much here are the front end papers and here are the back end papers let's see if there's anything on the hardcover Ooh, pretty i like it and see like red tower really kind of getting big for their britches like, i understand but like this is 32.99 and i'm sure that you know also has to do with like the customization whatever but on amazon it's like 22 dollars. so if i could save 10 dollars, why wouldn't i but I am excited about this. I didn't even know it was sci-fi. So like sci-fi romanticy probably. Well, that doesn't make sense. Sci-fi romance. Um, let's see how long it is. I want to read this soon. Yep, Sarah Wolf writes romance, sci-fi, and fantasy. She loves slow burn romances, cool fight scenes, and tea. Uh, it's 424 pages and the sequel is going to be called hell runner i'm excited for this very very excited for this um i haven't been vlogging really i haven't vlogged in like four weeks like i've tried to uh, in the last week start vlogging here but like i haven't honestly vlogged since i got back from mexico and that's actually been like five or six weeks actually but i'm gonna try i'm gonna try um i'm not sure what i'm gonna read next but i do have another vlog that i've been working on uh, for a while that I want to finish up so maybe I'll be reading Heaven Breaker who knows I need to read more of my TBR from this month because I've only read the one book so we'll see what happens and I will check in with you guys later hi friends I have come to Barnes and hope that finding the right book will fix me um your girl is down horrendous and I've just been so sad and so melancholy and I'm like okay maybe going to the bookstore maybe a new book will fix me and it's taken me till 8 p.m to get up the energy 
to do so. And I know that I should be in therapy and not raw dog life in my current state, but therapy is expensive and I don't have a job. So here we are. Also, in a very sad update, Barnes has taken science fiction and fantasy out of the front of the store in the new releases section and they put all the hard covers all the new releases in the back where all the rest of the fantasy was so that's weird but here's the hoping i find something that sparks a bit of joy i want to find something that i want to like pick up and read oh, excuse me immediately so let's see Hello friends, I am back from Barnes and I have a little bit of a call and a reading update. So as to the cumulative like all, we have some bookish stuff, we have some like non-bookish stuff. I also came home to a package and I ordered some skincare because my skin is horrible recently because I'm stressed and also I'm eating like shit and I'm not doing my skincare. So I got the Barrier Bounce from Naturium. It is an advanced skin hydrator and you can use it as a serum or as like a moisturizer to pump, brighten, and hydrate skin for a glowing complexion. I really like Naturium products and this is one that I want to try. So I got that. And then at Target, I got a couple things. So I want to take this like online course to like, I'm trying to upskill myself as I prepare to pivot into a new industry. So I was like, okay, new venture requires a new notebook. Let me know if you're the type of person where it's like, you're going to do a new thing, so you need a new notebook. So I got this notebook. It says, never stop growing, which felt fitting. It is a college rule notebook. Um, well, technically it's a journal, but it lays flat. So I'm like, it will suit my needs. And then I also picked up a Switch game because I'm just trying to find something that is going to make me feel better. Something to do with the endless days and hours that I have available. So I've got Hollow Knight. Um, this just looked really cool. And I asked some of my patrons about it and they said that some of them have played and they're like, it was fun. So I'm thinking hopefully I'll enjoy it. Uh, I used to be really into my Switch back obviously during like the pandemic. And then I beat the game that I enjoyed playing the most, which is Final Fantasy. And I guess I, I could just start over. And then I got really into Animal Crossing and I got into Zelda. But I stopped playing Zelda for like a year. And it's very hard to like pick back up because it's open world. And like you can really do anything. So I kind of have lost the plot mentally of like the actual things I'm trying to accomplish with like the four beasts and all that. So maybe I can like look it up and see. I don't know. But I wanted a new game. So I was like, why not try something different? Maybe it'll be fun. And then as far as the books. So I got this book. They had it out a little bit early. And that is Leather and Mark by Bryn Weaver. This is the second book in the Ruinous Love trilogy. I read the first book, Witcher and Blackbird, when I was in Mexico, and I enjoyed it. And I think I'm going to like this one even more. And then I picked up Bloom by Delilah S. Dawson. I have so many of my patrons have read this and loved this. Stephanie read it and loved it, and so I'm hoping that it's a banger. Now, I do think this short-ass book should not be $22.99, but that's neither here nor there. I got Shatter Me by Tahira Mafi because earlier this month I marathoned the This Love and Kingdom series, the three books that are out, and I absolutely loved it. I have not been the same since I finished it. I think about Cameron, not really Cameron, but I think about Alize and Cyrus every single day. 
Um, and I'm just so excited for the next book in that series. I kind of just want to reread it. And I was like, maybe, maybe her other series will work for me. I tried it on audio back in like 2019 and it gave me the ick. But now I'm like, okay, what if I could try it physically? Because I know that I like her writing. Maybe it'll work for me. And I know that similarly to that series, it has like two love interests. I think Aaron and Warner. Maybe Aaron and Warner are the same people. But I know that there are two guys. Two guys. And this is a longer series and it's complete. So maybe this will work for me. I picked up a new, another new release romance, and that is Favorite by Tara DeWitt. This is another author I'm giving a second chance. I tried Funny Feelings by her when it came out, when it was still like indie, and I DNF'd it halfway through. Uh, and this is her most recent release since then, at least to my knowledge. She had some other things that were indie that I think were picked up, but this is like a brand new thing. So I'm thinking this will be the most improved of her writing. So I'm interested in trying this. I know Chandler read it recently and really liked it and also i really just like this cover and then last but not least another new release we got evocation by sc gibson this is the first book in the summoner circle series um i read it out with blood i thought it was fine i wasn't particularly impressed by it but i'm excited to read this one i've heard really great early reviews and like the foiling on here i just think it's so pretty um, and look at the make it hard cover. Like, I'm sorry. I have to find a video to read this for. Um, I guess I'm kind of sort of trying to revive my new release series. But I don't know if I will, especially because like all I'm reading these days is like fantasy romance or fantasy. And then now I guess I'm sprinkling in some YA. But who knows? Maybe this will be the book that fixes me. Um, I think that this book is Polly, and I'm really intrigued by that. So hoping to get to this one pretty soon. So those are the books that I acquired. And then last night I started a new book. Like I said earlier, I've been reading more YA recently. And so, and I was thinking about the next book I wanted to start. I, this is a book that's been on my TBR for years. I'm like, hmm, let me start that. And that is These Hollow Vows by Lexi Ryan. This is the first book in a duology. Um, and this is about this human girl who is tasked with, um, her sister is taken by the king of the unseelie court and he asks her or requires her to find these three objects that are being held in the seely court and to do this she has to take part in this like courting competition where the prince of the seely court is trying to find a bride and she's navigating this landscape but somehow she also gets mixed up with the unseelie prince as well so I am 152 pages into this one and I gotta say I'm not loving it. It's very, very basic. It's the character work. It's not particularly special. So far we're only getting uh, our main character Abriella's point of view and she is very flat and very two-dimensional. Um, doesn't have much personality and honestly none of the characters in this book have much personality uh i don't think that it's particularly well written and the like atmosphere and the vibe of these courts is non-existent really um but if i dnf but i'm i'm taking this lot to the end of the month and today is the 29th so if i dnf this because i've only read one book in the vlog or i want to read at least one more so then i will only have Thursday the 30th and Friday the 31st to finish something else and the pace of my reading these days that is unlikely so I think I am going to try to just power through this and like maybe it gets better but this is definitely giving more like typical disappointing YA in my opinion than like the top tier YA that was This Woman Kingdom so uh, I'm going to read some more of this. It's like 11.30 at night. So I will talk to y'all in the morning. And hopefully at that point, I'm like halfway through. And I'll just have so many more things to say. Like this has been on my TBR since 2021. This is the Fairy Little Edition. I was a rep for Fairy during that time. So I'm trying to, instead of just buying new YA, like I just did, I want to try to make some progress with the ones that are on my shelf. Because I'm like, maybe in that crop of books there's a gem so yeah i will talk to you in the morning bye
start with the vlog and I wish I was coming to you with better news. So I know when we last spoke, I said that I really wasn't liking uh, these hollow vows that I was going to push through. Well, I read about 40 or 50 more pages and I just couldn't take it. And I asked myself, like, what do I gain from finishing this book? Because the only reason I wanted to finish it was so that I didn't have to start anything else and so I could have another book completed in the vlog. But I think that the fact that I don't want to finish it and I don't enjoy it, I think that says plenty about my thoughts and that is the review. Um, I don't think this is really good. I think this is a story that has been told a million times before and I don't care to see this iteration of it because in the 192 pages that I read it didn't do a single thing to impress me and I'm sure that contributes to part of the reason why it sat on my shelves for three years unread and I, as much as I would have liked to like it I didn't and keeping in mind keeping that in mind I wanted to you know finish out the vlog reading something else so I picked up another book on my TBR and that is is Heartstone by L. Catherine White. I'd heard Riley from Riley Marie talk about this, that it was like a Pride and Prejudice retelling with dragons, so I picked it up. And I read 126 pages before I decided this wasn't it either. So the end of the month has really not been my month, but as you've seen over the course of this vlog, May in general just has been a really rough month for me. So we've got two back-to-back -back DNFs and really it's three back-to-back -back awful books because the other book that I was reading in the same time I finished but it was not very good and I plan on hauling it. So unfortunately we are ending the vlog here and not such a great place but I'm hoping that the month of June is a better month for me in my personal life professionally and a better month for my reading so if you enjoyed this video let's leave a knife emoji um because I think that was hey is that what's on the cover or I know that was like an item that she had to find something like that let's leave a knife and I'll see you in my next one goodbye